Howdy folks! Welcome to something a little bit new! This is a game called Battle Brothers. Probably one of the most underrated games I've played in the past year or so. Maybe even longer, although I, I don't know how long it's been out, but it's been out for a good couple months and I've been playing it like crazy. I've got it like 150 hours in it. This is definitely by far an extremely fun, dark fantasy, like chess chess game type type thing. I, I, it's hard to explain. You'll you'll find out as we go here. So our group is going to be called the Saturnine and I'm going to pick the random late game crisis because it doesn't really matter. We're going to get all of them anyway if we play for long enough, if there's any interest. I like this game a lot. So let's continue here. We've got all the expert selections picked. Starting funds is very low and um, uh, we are going to be playing as Iron Man but I don't know, I've played enough XCOM to know that you do not select Iron Man, you just keep keep your saves like normal, uh, but we will accept everything that happens throughout the game. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, so our group gets ambushed. This is how the game always starts. Oh, he goes down by a two-handed axe, not good. Our commander, our commander goes down, he's done. Okay, so we've got a crossbowman, a two-handed axeman, and a spearman. And we gotta kill these two guys. Now this is mostly scripted, so I'm probably gonna just fly through it real quick, and then um, we'll go, we'll explain more in depth as, as it goes on here. So let's take a shot. Got him. Looks like we pierced his hand, so he's gonna be taking some penalties to attacking us. Let's move in with our two-handed axe here. You can see it took a little bit of action points to move, but we do have enough left to make an attack. If we hit him, it's bad news for him. Oh, we cut his head straight off. That is good. Now this axeman here, I don't want that thing happening to my spearman, so I don't want to just charge ahead and then watch him take a shot at us. So I'm going to move just right here. That way he's going to have to take two steps to, to get an attack in. So let's go ahead and end the turn. Yep, he takes one step because he knows he can't attack any other way. Why don't we take a pot shot at him with our crossbow? 54% chance to hit. Right across. A warning shot for sure. Let's move in here with our spearman. This is dangerous. These two-handed weapons do not screw around. And what I'm going to do is I could attack him right away for an 80% chance to hit. But I want to wait for... Um... I want to wait for a surround bonus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hit spacebar to wait. You can only wait once per round. And now I'm going to move in with my Axeman and you can see that we have a bonus for surrounding. So let's go ahead and take a, a shot at him. Wow, we got him. And he did a he did a, a two-handed axe AoE attack, which just it's could be devastating. But luckily he didn't hit any of us. So let's just, whoop, we missed. Whoa, he comes at us again. Like, I hold my breath every time one of these things swings at us because it's just brutal if it hits you. Let's get up here. When you're when you're right behind one of your bros, you can shoot through them because it, it's kind of like a shield wall type game. So um, if you hold like a good shield wall, all your archers behind can like slip fire in between the cracks. So let's go ahead and take a shot at him. Got him. What do we get? Oh, a wooden stick. Well... The, the event might be scripted, but the loot is random. Okay, so we got to go over there to Filestein, but let's take a look at the map first. Sometimes the um, generator can give you really bad maps, but this one looks like it's, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Now let's look at the other potential deal breaker here and see what our Battle Brothers got. Okay, no traits for Kettlemond. Dumb for Jost. Irrational and Eagle Eyes for Egengolf. Well, it's not the worst. It's not the worst. Dumb, it's pretty brutal, but we will... These are our original characters, and they're going to be the first to level up anyway. And Eagle Eyes for a, a ranged character is very good. It's very good. We get a vision bonus, which means we can wear better helmets as we go. You'll, you'll see a bit more about that uh, when we go forward here. So 
you know, sometimes you can get extremely bad traits, and so it's worth starting over, but I think we're going to be okay. So let's go ahead and head over on over to Filestein here. It looks like the shortest way is through the swamps, unfortunately, but uh, what can you do, huh? Let's go ahead and go on uh, speed two there and walk on over. This game is going to be at a different pace from the uh, Total War series for sure. So we're going to finish our, un our business with Hogart. And that's going to give us a, a nice little start, some extra cash. We don't have a lot of starting money here, so let's see who we can hire. Okay, we've got a farmer here. Farmers are excellent starting characters because they have extra health and extra fatigue. And they can take you a long way if you roll good stats. So let's go ahead and buy Torvald. He's dumb, but tough. He's got a points in resolve and lots of points in fatigue. So we'll keep him for now. He could turn into an extremely good character if he rolls really well on his melee skill and melee defense. Um, if he doesn't, well, that's just that's just the way the game works, but he has a lot of fatigue. He can be wearing like ultra heavy armor in the late game if he survives that long. Which he might. I mean he's tough. He's got he can wear the heaviest armors. All that matters is if his melee skill and melee defense pay off. So we'll see. That's not a bad buy. There's definitely worst buys we can make. Now, day tallers, they have no bonuses whatsoever, and I'd rather just not buy them, because for that much, sometimes we can find a farmer or a brawler who are way better. So let's go over to the market, see what we could buy. Ooh, a very cheap pitchfork. Let's do it. Oh, these tools are extremely cheap. You can see they're worth 200 and we can buy them for 196. So this is a really good deal. And tools are used to fix up all your items. See that says durability 16 out of 40. We can repair that up. It's going to be good to go. That's how we can buy things for really cheap and then repair them. It's definitely a good investment. It's a good way to start the game by, by buying broken stuff and fixing it. Okay, so let's go over here, and because Torvald doesn't have a shield or anything for now, let's just give him the pitchfork and set him in the back. With a pitchfork, you could reach over the ranks and, and stab people. Let's give our knife over to Kettlemund. Knives can be pretty helpful, and uh, you'll see more about that later on. So let's go ahead and leave Filestein and head on over to Gronenberg and see if there's anyone else we can recruit over there. We're looking just for some recruits, mostly farmers and stuff like that. That's what we want. Let's find out what we got. Okay. The castles have a lot more amenities usually and a lot more um, hires, especially like really good hires. Um, let's take... Oh, we've got a brawler. Brawlers are, are... I don't know. I've had a lot of luck with brawlers and they're usually cheap because they have nothing. Let's see what we get. He's greedy and hesitant. And he has stars and nothing I want. So we're going to get rid of him so that we don't have to pay for it. Um, I believe that the fewer brothers you have in the early game, the easier the encounters. So I don't want to recruit like a ton of garbage um, battle brothers and find out or and just get rocked by really hard groups because because we just have trashy soldiers. Let's pick up Ike here for 270. Ooh, this guy is amazing. He's got iron lungs, which is the best trait in the game, plus five fatigue recovery per turn. And he has three stars in melee skill and two in melee defense. And some initiative, which I don't really care too much about particularly, but we got to keep this guy alive. Wow, he is very good. We have to keep him alive because he's going to he's going to rank up into someone very strong. I can't believe we got so lucky there. So let's see what we can buy in the marketplace for cheap. Come on, anything anything battered here? Padded leather. This is usually a really good buy if it's if it's mostly um mostly beaten up, but that isn't. 
Let's pick up this Gambeson though, because for 76 gold, that's pretty good armor. We'll just fix it up, brand new. And we have a full Akaton hat over there that's pretty good too. So we'll pick that up. The pitchfork, well, let's, we'll just leave it at that for now. We'll sell the sackcloth, we don't need that. And what can we do here? Why don't we go ahead and give the Gambeson to Kittlemund and the full Akaton hat. And with Jost, okay, let's give, let's give that good stuff over here. Yeah. I want to, I need to get shields and one-handed weapons because it's a death sentence to be carrying a two-handed weapon for the most part in the early game anyway. Later on, you definitely want like big heavy weapons. But for now, that's going to just get him killed. All right, we checked for shields there. They're very expensive, so let's just continue. Let's go on up to Blankenstadt over there and see if they're selling anything worthwhile. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, the first fight is very scrappy because your guys are armed with garbage and they suck at fighting. It's awful. We want to pay close attention here in case raiders and stuff at night your group can't see very far. Okay, we're heading on into town. Yep, just story stuff. Let's go. We're almost there. Alright, it's dawn, so now the city is open for business. They have ambush trade routes, which is terrible for us right now. But it looks like we can get some stuff for decent prices anyway, like this shield. Boom, let's buy that. When the when a town has ambush trade routes, they buy things for for a lot of money, but they also sell things for a lot of money. So if I, if I was trying to sell stuff, I'd be very happy right now. But that's not what I'm trying to do. Let's get this Akaton hat as well. I like buying broken things in the beginning. It's just a good idea. Let's give Ike that shield. Now we can put him on the front line. And let's give the. Akaton hat to Jost over there. That way we can give the farmer's thing to Ingolf. Alright, we're looking okay, but we need more shields and one-handed weapons. But the spear is way too expensive. It's just way too expensive. So is the padded leather. What a, what a shame. This is a pretty rough start, but sometimes this, you know, the game just hands you... It just hands you terrible things. Why do I have... Oh, we need we need more we need more guys. Oh, did we check here? I don't think I checked the recruitment. Why don't we go check? Okay, we've got nothing. Nothing good. Nothing remotely good at all. Why don't we pick up uh, This is just terrible. Let's continue looking for, for good people here. We're only paying out 51 a day because all of our guys are just level 1 farmers and stuff. So they're not too expensive to maintain. So we're going to keep looking for good brothers here. we got to find good stuff to start leveling up. Otherwise it costs way too much to dismiss like terrible brothers later on in the game. Yep, we've already checked here. Is the market any different? We could get a hatchet for pretty cheap. But I want I only want swords and spears right now for the most part because those are the, those are really good starting items because you get bonuses to hit Let's go on up to Mordor Mordorf. Wow Let's head on up there and see what we can find Hopefully we can find some farmers and stuff We're moving past these peasants Reveal oh, there's a battle site. Yep. You want to be real careful when you see battle sites. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to slow down or pause because there's brigands hiding in the trees right there Yep, and they're coming after us. We don't want that. I Think they're killing all those farmers aren't they? You can see their footprints it looks like they're leaving Maybe can we sneak by It looks like we're sneaking by Okay, wow, that, that was close. That was pretty close. Those guys would have creamed us. This is a very dangerous game. <laughs> sometimes it... Ugh, you gotta be very careful sometimes. Alright, so we're in Mordorf over here. Who do we have? Ooh, a witch hunter. I'd be really happy to get him, but it's not that time in the game yet. And 
We have some flagellants. I guess let's pick up Rupert here. Let's see what he can do. We really need to start getting some bros. Oh, he's a dastard. That He had good stats, but a dastard, they always start combat at wavering, which is really bad for the company. So we, we can't, we just can't have him there. He's going to cause everyone else to like break and run. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's just pick up this day taller here and see what we get. He's also a dastard. Are you kidding me? Good lord! Come on, guys, give me something. Give me something. Let's pick up Ewald here. He's a survivor, but he's he's total garbage. But we're gonna have to just deal with it. We're just gonna have to deal with it. He's totally going to die in the in the fight ahead. He's totally going to die. So, all right. That's all we can afford because, yep, we only have three days pay and we have to get over to Philistine to, to do the first battle here. So, boy. Sometimes you just get handed the worst stuff to start. Oh, these brigands are waiting again. Wow, we actually got by them. I don't know why, what they were waiting for, but maybe maybe you don't get waylaid before your first... Nope, those ghouls are looking for us. Okay, so we're... Okay, we're good. We're good. Great. So it looks like the dungeon's over there. Let's see how we fare. Sometimes you could just totally wipe on the first mission. I mean, we've gotten mostly garbage brothers, but we do have some that are good. It's going to be nighttime by the time we get there, though, and that could be bad. Come on, are we going to get there? Oh, I think it's night. It hit night right before we got in here. So let's see how we fare. Okay, well, it's dark and we can't see anything. Now, we do have a couple of good spots here. We've got some elevated terrain over here, which would work very well for us. I think we're going to go and try and secure that elevated terrain over there. So let's get moving. There they are. They're dangerous. They're super dangerous, guys. Let's get Ingolf over there. Unfortunately, Ingolf is going to be almost entirely useless because it's nighttime. Let's get our pitchfork up here. There's Hogart the weasel. He's wearing some chain mail. He's got a shield and a falchion. He's extremely dangerous in this mission. Who's Ike? Ike, are you? Oh, you're the good one. I do not want you to die. I do not want you to die. Out of everyone, you have to survive this encounter. How am I going to make that happen? I think we'll put him right here on the elevation. So he's he could defend himself a little bit better fighting enemies that are lower elevation around him. Let's get... Jost over here, kind of in reserves because he has that two-handed axe, which is going to really put the hurt on someone, but he's got no shield. That two-handed axe is moving in. This sword, this club man is moving in. Can we get over there? No, we can't. That's not good. Let's try it anyway. Let's go for it. Hopefully we can get up there before the other guys can uh, get their turn. Okay, what are we looking at? Axe in 10 turns. That's bad. Well, let's see if we can get in there with Ewald because this guy is just god awful. Let's see if we can get in and like distract them so that hopefully Kettleman can, can move. So let's go for it. Hello. Oh, we missed him. Let's get our, our crosswoman. He has a well, that's not a bad chance to hit. It's not bad. So let's take a shot. Nope. Let's reload. The guy with the dagger moves in. He stabs Jost a bit. Why don't we take a stab at him with our pitchfork? Or actually, I'm going to get our pitchfork in a better position here. If I can get him on elevation, we'll have a better chance of fighting Hogart. Let's do that. Hogart. Okay, wow, he does... Good, this is kind of working out. Let's see if we can hit this guy. 62%. If we hit him, he is in big trouble. Miss. Not good. Let's 
Let's take a chance here and see if we can move. If you try and move out of someone's um, area of influence, they get a free attack on you. And if they hit, you can't move. But if I can move here, then anyone who wants to fight him is going to have to get in here and take attacks. Damn, that was that did not work out. Ewald gets pummeled a bit. We're just going to hold our position on top of the hill there. Oh, yep, our flagellant got wrecked, but that's kind of what we expected. He took the damage so that Kettleman can get up here. Great. Okay, let's... Okay, we can hit this guy. 57% chance. Bonk. That was a good hit. Now, I have a choice here. I can use Lash, which automatically goes for their head. But it costs a lot of fatigue. Or I could use Flail again, which which gives us a better chance to hit. But he's... he's He's not wearing a helmet anymore because we just battered it right off. So if I can clock him in the head with this, it's going to do a ton of damage to him. <clears throat> Boom! We got him and it broke his nose. That was a good hit. Let's hold with Kettleman here. In fact... In fact, let's spear wall. Yeah, let's do that. Anyone who tries to approach him, he gets a free attack on. That could come in handy. All right, Torvald, it's your turn. Maybe we can kill that guy, but I think I want to wait. In case anyone else approaches, we'll be able to hit him with our pitchfork. Oh, Joss gets stabbed a couple times. And let's see, this brigand thug with the two-handed axe is extremely dangerous, so I want to keep shooting at him with my crossbow. Nope, it's nighttime, we can't see. Oh, he comes in very sneaky-like. Jost is completely surrounded. He could very well die, but we do have round swing. It's going to hit everyone around him. Maybe. It could do. We could just kill a ton of people right now or nobody at all. Let's find out. <laughs> wow, we hit a lot of people there and it almost killed all of them. That could be handy. Okay, Hogart moves in and he hits Ike. Ike, what can you do, buddy? You gotta start killing some guys. Let's see if we could take down this thug. Nope. Come on, get him. Yeah, we got a kill there. But Jost is gonna be taking some damage. Okay, now the big question is, should I move in with Kettleman here to help out? Or do I go after this archer? I think... I think the answer is to go after Hogart here because the archer is not going to be very effectual at night. Normally I'd go after him because he's, he'd be doing damage. So let's let's get off our hill here and see if we could stab Hogart. Well, we got him, but it was in the chain mail and it was not very helpful. Let's see if we can take down this thug. Nice! You can see that shifted morale quite a bit there, although we're still wavering here with Ike. Um, but Jost... They're, they're also wavering. It's You can see these little white flags. They are not happy that they just lost one of their guys there. Joss, let's go ahead and wait and go into the next round. Okay, so we start with Torvald. We get another attack on Hogart for 65%. If we hit him in the face, it's going to do a lot of damage. Nice! And we did. We ripped his ear, too. Okay, he's going at Joss there. We're taking some damage. Not good. I don't want to lose him. Let's see if we can move up the crossbow and shoot this guy before he gets a turn. Nope. So the archer's going to move in. Oh, no. Oh, that was close. Let's see if we can take Hogart down. Nice. He's down and this guy is now fleeing. He's out of the fight. He's out of the fight. So let's let's press the advantage here. Let's get in there with everyone. We gotta help Jost out. We don't want him to die because he's extremely good. Let's see if we can kill this guy. Nope, that's bad. That's very bad. Let's move up here with Torvald and with Ingolf. We'll just, we'll hold position here. Okay, new turn. Hopefully we can kill someone here. We gotta kill this thug before he gets a turn. The archer is also very bad news, but yeah, we have a 70% chance because he's like surrounded. So this could be the kill shot. Nice. He's down. 
Let's reload our crossbow and see if we can kill this guy. Nice, he's down and the archer is done. He doesn't want it. Let's get on him. Let's chase him down. We want his bow, we want all his gear. With Jost, let's get out of here. That was close. Nope, we're gonna run him down. Let's get in with our pitchfork. Let's get in with everyone. Yep, he takes out a club and tries to get us, but he's just an archer. Bonk. Couple misses there, that's alright. Let's we just gotta stab him to death now. Joss, keep keep just stay far away. Alright. And the pitchfork kills him. Oh, Ewald survives. He's missing an eye. I thought he died, but uh, he's still around. <laughs> Uh, he's got an eye patch and everything. That's just great. Minus two vision, minus 50% range skill. All right, well, we'll just throw him at the next group until he dies. Ooh, we got chain mail, a falchion, and two shields. We got some money and some amber. It's turning around for us. We got a terrible start, but this is one heck of a comeback. This is a great comeback. Let's go home and get paid. But first, let's go ahead and do some of our levels here. All right, so this is the level up screen. Kettleman, he's kind of like, you, all your three starting bros are all pretty much, um, they always have the same stars. You have like one tanky bro who's got lots of health, a little bit of fatigue and some resolve. And you have like a, a battle, uh, like a berserker bro and you have a ranged bro, so. Um, fatigue is probably the most important stat in the game. So if you have three or more fatigue, it's almost always the purchase you want to make. Um, health falls off pretty quick because you could just take um, a perk called Colossus, which gives you a ton of health. Um, in the early game, health isn't too useful. Well, there's, there's a certain point when health falls off. Um, you want to have like maybe around 80 because there's guys later in the game that have like crossbows and armor piercing weapons and they can just blast right through your armor straight into your health. Um, or, a, or a goblin with a knife can get in under your armor. So it's a good idea to have a decent amount of health. So let's go ahead and let's take our plus four resolve over here. Resolve is great. Keeps you from running. And, and I think because... I want to set up like kind of like a monster hunter group here. So all of us are going to have really high resolve for fighting monsters and stuff like that. I think it's going to be cool to do it that way. Now we rolled, we rolled awful on our melee skill and extra awful on our melee defense. Those are terrible rolls. Um, I mean, two isn't too bad, but three is much better. And that's the max for these is a three. So, I mean, I guess two is average. Two is, two is average. Um, I think what we're going to do here is I'm going to go with plus three range skill. Ten is pretty good because um, then you can slap a shield on top of it and, and you have pretty good range defense. So since we managed to roll a three there, I'm going to take it. Uh, but I'm probably not going to invest any more in it because ten is pretty good and then plus a shield. Okay, let's go ahead and take that. Now um, you get a perk with every level. There's tons of perks. Um, a lot of good ones, and I did a little bit of planning beforehand, so I wouldn't sit and stare at the perk screen a lot. I think we're going to go with Colossus first for, for most of our melee bros. Um, it just gives you it gives you 25% more health and reduces the chance to sustain debilitating injuries when hit, like um, how we have a probably a pierced muscle there and like a broken up face. You can resist those with Colossus, and that's just, it's really good. So let's take it. Boom, we're straight up to 72 health. That's gonna help us survive the early game because our armor is garbage. And for like Jost here, look, he was re put into his health dam uh, pool and that is a scary place to be. You don't wanna be there. And you could already see his dumb trait is really coming in because he should have leveled up there, but he didn't. That's bad. But what we can do is we can give him a sword and shield now. That's gonna help his survivability a lot. That is going to help a lot. Why don't we give him some chain mail? Now he's a very tanky bro, which is he's kind of supposed to be because he has melee defense and melee skill. He's a great sword and board guy. And then um, if we roll well enough and, and towards the end game, he's going to be great with a two handed weapon as well. OK, so this is 65 armor. That's 55. 
this is up to 50 so let's go ahead and train that i mean it's zero percent durability right now but um it's easy to fix up this stuff in the early game so that shouldn't be too much of an issue for us over here with Ingolf, let's go ahead and get our plus four range skill. He's definitely going to be our ranged bro. He's going to be shooting. Let's go with four fatigue. That's a really good idea. And the range defense is also a really good idea, but we did roll max for resolve. And I think I want to take that. It's a really good idea to have at least 50 resolve. I want to get like 60 um, and 70 with all our bros because fighting monsters is yeah, it's pretty scary business. So, boom. There it is. I think with uh, our ranged bro... Let me look at my sheet here. Yes, he's going to be... He's going to be pure... Pure shooty, so we're going to get fast adaptation. You can see that every time we miss, we get an 8% chance bonus to hit for the for the next attack. Let's take that. It's not very good with a crossbow because you can only shoot once per round, but when we do get a bow and some arrows, we can shoot twice per round, and that 8% adds up very quickly until you have a guaranteed hit. And I find that's pretty helpful, especially in the early game, and even in the late game, it's pretty helpful. Okay, so we have a padded surcoat we can give out. Let's give it to, let's see, um, 55, 50. Right, we just replaced that. Over here, Ewald, he's just, he's going to go die. That's his, that's his goal. He just, he ran interference for us and he's going to run interference for us again. Let's go ahead and give the padded surcoat to Tor Torvald there. We've got a lot of shields. It's good to have some extra shields in case someone breaks one. So that's it. That took a while. Let's go home and pick up our money. Fast mode, go. Yep, there's just story stuff in the beginning. I don't... It's not... Hey, Ewald recovered quick, but uh, screw that guy. We're just going to send him to his death. We're using, you can see we're using up tools every once in a while as we repair all our busted up equipment from that. And we get 400 crowns. Nice. That helps a lot. That helps a lot. Now it's dawn, so let's go ahead and see if we can recruit anyone else. Nope. Can we get anything good in the market? No, doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Looks like we can't really sell anything for good prices either, so let's just hold on to it. And now let's go looking for actual work. Let's go looking for some work here. Where's the next town? We could... Let's see, there's Mordorf, Tangweir, Torvanolm. There's a lot of towns. I think I want to stay in the south for now so we don't get missions up in the snow. That could be extremely deadly because the snow causes a lot of fatigue. So let's just go, let's go far south to these uh, villages and stuff and, and visit them and see what they can get, do for us here. Let's go fast mode. We want to keep an eye out in these mountain passes because there could be raiders that are waiting to jump out at us. Okay, let's go over to Hawk Groove over there. Let's see what, if they have any work for us. Oh, okay, so... As you play the game, you get these things called ambitions. And you can choose like a goal, like a stepping stone goal for your group. And I think I'm going to go for make a friendship with a town. It's a very easy one. And I don't want to force myself to go back up to it or to rise to a dozen men super quick because that'll make our encounters very difficult if we do that. I want quality bros and, and moderate encounters so that we can get gear and not lose too many guys. So let's go with this one. And as we as we accomplish our ambitions, we get our reputation up and people will start paying us more because they know we're reliable and we know they know we're like a good company. So um, there'll be more on that as as we go here. Let's see if we get work here. Okay. Ambush trade routes. That's great. Let's sell our stuff. This is the only time where we can make money. Amber, yes, let's sell that. That was worth a lot of money. But uh, unfortunately, they're also selling things for very expensive, so we can't pick anything up here. Who do we have to hire? Oh, we've got a brawler for 150. Let's take him. What do we get? 
Good melee skill. Good health. Okay. He's um he's worth a worth a try. He's worth a try. We'll keep him in reserves because he's not wearing any armor. So he'll stay behind Ewald and and when Ewald dies again, we'll just move him up and hopefully he can survive. If not, well, that's just how this game works early on. It's just how it works. Let's see what kind of work they have for us. Okay, it looks like they're having a problem with... Yep, brigands are doing stuff. 280 crowns. Let's see. Okay, they'll pay us 300 crowns. We have to drive off brigands at High Mort Castle, north of Hawk's Group. Now, 300 crowns is pretty good for a first contract. It could be really dangerous. I don't know. It's Wow, it's all the way up there. That's really annoying. Let's see. Before nightfall, can we get any food for cheap? Let's, yeah, let's pick up some grains there. Have some cereal on the way over. And start heading towards our next battle. We'll probably end the episode after this next battle. I want to have a couple battles in the first episode so people get an idea of what this game is like. Uh, as the game progresses, I mean, there are a lot of cool items and armors. And you can, you can go searching for unique items and, and legendary items and stuff. And kind of, I mean, it's, it's a totally an adventure game. There's a lot of adventure in it. It's very cool. Okay, let's, let's just take a look at our bros here before we jump in. Jost is, he's got a bruised leg, which gives him a, an initiative penalty and it costs one more action point to move. So we'll want to keep that in mind, but I don't want to have him sit the battle out because he really needs to level up and he's extremely powerful. So with this sword and shield, he's going to chop people up pretty good. Over here, Ewald, he's going to just run interference for us like last time. And we're just going to see how this goes for us. These, these early battles are very scrappy. Very scrappy. Let's engage. Oh boy. We've got a number of two-handed axemen. I think that's a sword. And just uh, an assorted amount of, of other deadly utensils. So... How do we want to go? I think I want to take this high ground here. Probably get our pole arm up there so he can reach over and hit around like with no problem. Let's get Ewald up here though and see if maybe people go after him and try and kill him. Because he sucks. I hate him. No one is in range with our crossbow so let's just wait. And let's wait with our pole arm here and see what they do. It's almost their turn. I want to see how they move and then we can place the rest of our guys here. Yep, let's wait. Okay, he's taking the bait on Ewald. That guy moved into the bushes there. Yep, they're all going after Ewald. Let's move down here with Ike. God, I hope Ike survives because he's going to be very good if he does. Let's get over here with Kettlemond. Oh man, that thug is scary. Actually, let's see if we can gang up on him with Kettlemond, like this. And I could attack him right now, but I want to wait because I'm going to move up other guys and we'll get at a surround bonus. You want to kill these guys as soon as you can. Okay, they're moving in. Oh, Kettlemond is in trouble. Don't worry guys, I do do better at this game, but uh, I'm just, this is my first episode running this, so I'm, I'm kind of screwing it up a little bit. So we moved in and he failed a morale check, so he's wavering now. Let's see if we can get an attack in on him. We missed, 77% chance to miss. This game will, or can and will XCOM you um, sometimes, so be aware of that. All right, with our crossbow, let's move in here. And see if we can get a shot on this guy. Hopefully we can shoot him right in the face. Nope. We did we did okay damage there. Could have been better. Now let's move in with our, our um, pole arm or our pitchfork and see if we can get him. No. Not good. Let's move up here with Egil. And let's see. What were your stats again? Decent. Very decent. But... 
Boy, these axes are scary. We'll, we'll wait on that and then move in on them. That guy comes out of the bushes. Let's get... Uh, let's get Ike up. Sure. And Kettleman, see if you can give this guy a stab. Nice! We got him right in the head and it killed him. Right in the head. Normally, Dross would be able to move up, but his bruised leg is preventing him. Let's reload our crossbow. And see if... Let's see. I could take a shot, but I'll accidentally... I could accidentally hit Kettleman here, but if I try and take a shot at him, my chances of hitting him are very high. So let's try it. Got him! That was awesome. That was a good hit. Maybe we'll be able to kill him before he gets a turn. This guy moves in and he hits Ike. Not good. Let's gang up on him with Egil here and see if we can give him a good clocking. No. He moves up with his cleaver and nails Ewald, but that's kind of just how that works. Let's come in with Torvald. We have to kill this guy. We don't have many more chances. We missed. Let's see if we can take him down. Good, we got him. That gave him an injured shoulder and a broken nose. Or that just broke his nose. He already had an injured shoulder, but he goes next. 52% chance we can kill him. Nope. He chooses to break Kettleman's uh, shield, so now we don't have any defenses with him. But now we're almost guaranteed to kill this guy. He's down. That did a lot of morale damage. Um, when their morale, or when anyone's morale is low, they, they suffer penalties. And see, I have my blue flag there. That means my morale is very high. Look at that. We get 10% to all our um, best or most important skills. So that's really good. He's shield walling and we still have a 61% chance to hit. Nope, we just hit the shield. That's too bad. Let's move up with Jost here and gang up. Got him. We cut his head clean off. This is going super well for us. It was a little scary early on. And Ewald just lay into this guy a little bit. Nice. They're running. They are running. Now it's the new turn. He moves in with his knife and he misses. Let's go ahead and reload our crossbow here and step up. And Ewald just lay into him. He Ewald's bleeding because he got hit by a cleaver. That's a special ability from cleavers is that actually if they do any health damage, it um, it does a little bit of bleed damage afterwards. Let's clock uh, clock these guys a little bit more. Nope. Got him. Let's step up on here so we get a, a height bonus. Look at this. 79% chance to hit. Boom! That was a good amount of damage. Let's see if we can kill this guy. Well, we stabbed him a good couple times there. We can speed up now because this is definitely a win. They're trying to run. We get some free shots on them. But we failed because our guys are not the best. Can we kill this guy with the crossbow? He's down. Let's reload. Let's start chasing him. Nope, you're not getting away from us, guys. You have stuff we want. We gotta keep chasing them. We want to kill everyone, especially early on. We want all the gear we can get so we can sell it. Nice, he's trying to get away and we're clubbing him good. This guy's running. Oh, he gets clubbed real good. And nope, we're gonna run him down. New turn, everyone get on him. Yep. We got this. These early battles are scary. They're super scary. Let's go up there. And Kettleman. Yep, everyone's all over this guy. He's not going to get away. He's down. Okay, we got a lot of level up there. A lot of levels up. We get the pickaxe. We get the cleaver. Good. We get a shield. Oh, we get a blotched gambeson. Some tools. Lots of cash. That's good. Not the best, but good. Alright, let's take our levels up. Ike. Yep, look at that. He gets plus four on his melee skill every level. That's going to be extremely powerful. Melee defense plus three, extremely powerful. Range defense or fatigue though. 
He does have iron lungs, which makes him... Uh, he, this guy, if we can just get him to survive just a while, he's probably going to be great. The range defense could go a long way to keeping him alive, and so could the fatigue, though. This is a three range defense, so we're going to take that. It's not often you get three on the defenses, but uh, we're, we're not going to be able to put too much into it. But a little bit goes a long way. Speaking of a little bit going a long way, let's take Colossus with him too. Bam, 81 health. That is awesome. We don't even need to take any points in health probably with him. Jost finally gets a level because he's dumb. All right, we get three melee attack, extremely valuable, four fatigue, very valuable, and only two melee defense, but um, that's still, we're going to just take it because melee defense is extremely important if you want to survive at all. Let's go ahead and take Colossus with him too. If you haven't noticed, I really like Colossus as an early pick. Crippling Strikes is pretty good too for like a crossbowman because they just, they um, all, almost always do health damage. Um, but I've, you know... There's, there's a million and one ways you can build a character. But uh, in my other campaign, they mostly have like crippling strikes and um, a whole lot of other stuff. But since I, I kind of want to go with like a band of knightly Templars that go around doing good and fighting monsters. So I think having a bunch of um, Colossus guys, lots of health for fighting big, nasty stuff. Torvald here. All right, you're dumb, but you're also very tough. I don't... Uh, we'll see how he fares. We get lots of these skills, which is great. But everything else is extremely lackluster. Let's take two melee skill. I don't really see this guy staying with the band very long. As soon, we'll probably replace him as soon as we can, even though I really like triple fatigue. Let's just take Colossus with him, too. 97 health is insane. <laughs> okay. All right. We could be doing worse. We could be doing worse. Let's go down over here and collect our bounty. Let me know in the comment, like, uh, this is probably going to be an uneventful trip, so I don't know if... I mean, it's it is pretty quick. It's not like it's a loading screen. So, and the pace the pace of the game is different. So, I I can't make it all exciting all the time. But there are good moments. Okay, so looks like we fixed the ambush trade routes because we went and killed the brigands, and we get three hundred crowns. Very nice. Let's see the marketplace now. Things are well. Things are actually not very reasonable here still, which is unfortunate. Let's let's see if they have anyone new to hire. We do have a farmhand for 160. Let's see what he can do. He's dexterous, but he is gluttonous. Gluttonous doesn't do anything, but it could turn into fat later on, which is extremely bad. But he does have three stars in resolve. I think what we're going to do with him... Is he worth keeping around, honestly? I think it's, it's probably time to get rid of Ewald here. We'll just dump him. Get out. Screw you. I'm not even going to pay you compensation because you suck. And we'll, f we'll fill in with this guy for now. He's he's obviously better. So let's give him a padded surcoat. Let's give him a hood, a shield, and a cleaver. There we go. That's all right. Oh, we're missing a shield, though. We got, we got our shield broken. So you don't deserve one just yet. You're not cool enough. Let's give one to Kettleman again. And that's, that's how we're going to roll here. Let's upgrade our Gambeson to this one. This is 70 instead of 65, so that's good. Ike over here, let's give you the Gambeson. That's another 10 armor for you, buddy. And Eagle, we can actually give you decent armor now instead of a, just a tunic. So why don't we get you on the front and let's see. That's 10 to 25. This is 15 to 30. Let's go with the pickaxe. 
We want more swords and spears for sure. This he this guy could make a decent sergeant. We're gonna we're gonna try building him for that. I mean his starting resolve is crap, but for the first sergeant it could be it could turn out to be okay. And the the melee skill could come in handy if we give him a pole arm. Let's I thought I saw a pitchfork in here. Yep, that's a good price. Let's buy it and just give him another pitchfork. And we'll have kind of like, yeah, that's good. That'll work. That'll work for now. Let's sell that those outfits. They're, they're useless. That shield is full price. I don't think I want to buy that. They do have another job for us, though. Let's find out what they have. A relic of great importance. How much? 70 in advance and another 300 when the job is done. They'll give us 80 in advance and another 320 when the job is done. What do they want? Ooh. This could be a fight with undead. Let's see. Let's see how equipped we are for that. Hmm. Fighting undead is a tricky matter. And there's two kinds of undead as well. There's two kinds of undead as well. Why don't, let's just go over here. I don't, I don't feel comfortable fighting undead yet. I want to fight some more people so we can take loot from them and wear it. So let's head on a, whoop, trading caravan. Okay. Let's head on over to, oh, whoa. A few poachers and some raiders. Seven verse six. That is not what I, I don't want to do that. Let's get out of here. Run. This trading caravan has some guards and hands. Maybe we can fight them together. Maybe. We'll see how it goes. Oh, I don't want to do it. Let's do it. This is the only chance we're going to have. We, we can gang up on them, hopefully. Okay, looks like we, if we're quick enough, we can secure this high ground. These guys are extremely dangerous because they're raiders. They have like chain mail. Oh boy, hopefully these caravan guards actually lend a hand. Let's, let's just see what they do. They wait. They're going to try and shoot it out with us is, is what it looks like. The caravan is moving up. That guy gets hit. Good, better than us. Let's, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I, I was gonna try and click there, but, ah. Okay, let's get more pole arms up on the hill. Whoever takes this hill is going to win. That's pretty much how that works. Can we, let's go over there with Ike. Let's just secure this hill as best we can. Egil, are you any good? Yeah, you're okay. Keeping you alive wouldn't be the worst thing. Let's move you... Let's see, if we go here, then Jost can go up there. Then Kettlemond. I don't know where you can go, Kettlemond. Let's just... We'll go right here for now. Kettlemond, you go up there. And Jost, you can hold right here. Hopefully that helps. Okay, good. These caravan guards are actually planning on helping us. That's good. Let's go up here for the for the height. We have the high ground. That's going to give us major bonuses here. We also have the numbers, but they have the quality while we have the quantity. Let's, yep. We might be able to get better into better. Yeah, they're going to hold. They're going to try and shoot it out with us because they have the range superiority. Let's get over here with Ingolf, or actually, let's see, we do have some shots here, but they're not very good. Let's, let's move over here. Can we hit this guy? No, that bush is in the way. So let's, let's take a pot shot at him. No, I like how they stick out of the ground like that. Okay, those caravan guards are moving in. I'm worried that we might have to go and help them because if they just get slaughtered, uh, we could get killed piecemeal and that would be very bad. Let's see, Axe and Four turns 13, 11. 
Seven, eight. Okay, so if I move up with the pole arm here, this guy could jump on us. That would be bad. So let's wait. With Egil, let's... Uh, it would be good to take that high ground before they do. But Egil, how do I feel about losing you, buddy? How do I feel about losing you? His melee attack is so high. I mean, he could turn out, if he rolls good on fatigue and melee defense, he could turn out to be an extremely good character. So I don't want to just, I don't want to throw him away. So let's just wait. Let's see what they do. Good. This guy moves up, making it a little bit harder for them to move because they'll have to, yep, okay. Now let's move up our pole arms. Oh, that guy goes down from an arrow. Jost, why don't you take the hill there? We don't want, we just want to deny it from them. That's what we want to do. Kettleman, just, yep, get next to your brothers there. There is definitely a good reason to stick together in this game. Oh, what are you doing, buddy? Come on, man, get into the fight. Everyone needs to be on board here. Let's get Torvald up. We're closing in on him. We're closing in, but this could be a sketchy fight. He's spear walls, okay. Shield wall over there. And let's, uh... Yes, let, let's just hold here and see what they do. They're just gonna stand there. Yep, they're, they're making us come at them, which is smart because we have the high ground and if they come at us, they'll die. Let's reload our crossbow here. Oh, we can't quite get a good shot, but if we miss this guy and hit that guy, that will be good. Oh, we totally killed that guy. Good shot, Ingolf. Good shot. That's going to change this battle. That's going to change it. They're going to feel a little bit... Yeah, they're going to feel a little bit tempted to come at us now because we... now it's, it's not so uneven on the ranged. Let's skip our guys' turns here and see what they do. He takes a shot, we block it. The Axeman, he just holds his position. Okay, well, if you guys want to play that way, we'll hold our position too. Over here, we could have a, tr a problem though. Yeah, Ike goes up against a raider. That raider's wearing chain mail and he's got a morning star and all we have is, a, is a, some sticks that are chained together. Oh, it looks like we're engaging over here though. Okay, let's move. Let's, they're done. We, okay, let's move our pole arm here. That's gonna work. Oh, this is pretty sketchy stuff here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold back and hope that these guys jump in on that raider. Yep. Over here, we have a 38% chance to hit him, but we might as well. It's all we can do. Oh, we got him in the head. We did a little bit of damage. That's good. Let's see if we can give him a good clubbing. Nice. No. All right. Well, the odds, they, they were, you know, pretty decent there. Kettleman, can we get you over there, buddy? Let's do that. We want to help out over here. 58% chance. I like it. Poke. We gave him a good little poke there. And let's just skip with Jost and see what they do. Oh, the axe moves up on Kettleman. And that guy gets totally slain by the hooked blade, which is a very good early item. But now they're open for attack. Let's sweep in here. Okay, we've got the archer tied up now. But our pole arm is open. Okay. Let's see if we can get this guy. If we can hit him in the head, we'll do a lot of damage. Nope. Let's see, what should we do? Should we should we take a step back here? Let's take a step back. No, let's let's just hold there for now. Just Let's move down with you. 
And let's take a stab at this guy, 43. No, okay. Let's reload our crossbow and see what kind of shots we can get. Not very good. So let's let's just move up a bit. Kettleman, 50% or 60. That axe is very scary. But let's see if we can get this guy down so that we can free up all these guys to help us over here. Nice. That was a good hit. Two good hits. Let's keep going at him here. No. Oh, he's going after our shield. That's bad. Okay, good. The caravan guards are moving in to help us. Good. That's good. We might make it through this. We just might make it through this. Jaws, 68% chance now. Oh, we got him in the head too. Good damage. Oh, he does a round swing and it misses both of us. That was scary. Let's see if we can hit him good in the head. Nope. Oh, that hooked blade is a very fearsome weapon. I hope we can salvage it after the battle. Let's see if we can get this guy with another 43%. Or actually, let's wait. This guy might... Oh, he's, he's turn's done. Okay. No. Let's go after the, the hooked blade guy. We're doing slow but sure damage. We'll take a shot with our crossbow if we miss and hit that guy. Good. Nice. Nice. Let's reload. Can we kill this guy? One hit. He's he's routed. But if we kill him, we get his loot. Nice. We got the axe and the shield. Can we kill this guy? 50%? Nope. He's taking some more damage over there. Let's keep bopping on this guy. Now that things are kind of set in stone here, we can take this a little bit faster. Usually the... Oh, man. They killed that guy. Ah, uh, that means we don't get his stuff. Okay. I want to get that hooked blade if we can, though. I really want to get it. Let's wait for the pole arm. Yep, they're getting surround on him. Can we get him? Nice. That was a good hit. He goes at an eagle there with his knife. Oh, we take a hooked blade in the head. That hurt a lot. Let's get over here with Jost. Can we kill him? If we don't kill him, the Spearman will. Let's hope we do. No, we miss. Oh, no, don't kill him. Oh, good. He doesn't. No. Oh, damn it. Oh, all the good loot has been taken. Let's just see if we can get this guy. We gave him a good thrashing over there. Let's move down with our crossbow and take a shot. Nope. That's okay. Well, we got a morning star and a shield, so that's all right. And the archer's down. Well, I mean, we get 200 gold. We get a hand axe and a flail. Those are deep. These are like tier two items. So all in all, I mean, I really would have wanted that hooked blade over all of it because those are very good. But, you know, we'll take what we can get. We're just lucky that we got help. Um, against that those raiders so we can actually continue on our way let's let's take a look at our equipment though any more helmets no no more helmets do we have anyone with good enough fatigue to heft this shield that brings us down to 71 with jost but let's do it he's very tanky i want him to be tanky and let's see, let's give you the that flail. Look at this, it does 25 to 55 compared to 10 to 25. There's an upgrade for you. There's a really good upgrade. And the hand axe, yeah, let's upgrade you to a hand axe. That's 30 to 45, this does 15 to 30. It's very effective against armor, but this is also effective against armor and really no one is wearing armor in the early games, so Overall, the hand axe is going to be a, a very big increase. Let's give our bandage to this guy, too, in case someone uh, starts bleeding to death. Okay, and I think that's going to be the end of this episode. I hope you guys um, enjoyed it. 
Um, Battle Brothers is a very good game. I hope you stick uh, stick with me here as I play through because um, it, it's just it's a very high quality game, and the more you get to know it, and um, the the further you get when you start fighting monsters and undead and stuff, the 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 tactics change and develop depending on what you're fighting. It's just it's overall just an incredible game, and um, well, I will see you in the next episode.